right now I'm doing a Navajo ply and I wish my spinning wheel would pull just a little harder because it keeps binding up on me. So when you spin, a lot of times when you first start spinning on a wheel, uh, you don't like it just because you haven't figured out its personality yet. And all of my wheels, I have that kind of a, a love-hate love hate relationship depending on how much I've been spinning on it and what I've been spinning on it. And so, you know, but that's the case with any wheel. If you've just cleaned your wheel it, and, and cleaned everything on it, it will behave differently than it did when it was dirty. Um, if you have shoes on versus being barefoot, it will spin differently. If you're, if you're spinning cotton as opposed to long mohair, it'll spin differently. Some wheels are just easier to spin really fine on and some wheels are just easier to spin really thick on. And um, it is a tendency of crafters to have multiple machines that do different things. But the more multiple machines you have, the less you have to like tweak and finesse your wheel. As far as having one wheel that does everything you want it to, the Mach 3 is definitely a great machine. It's the one behind me. Um, but it doesn't travel well. And I don't like the treadle as much as I like the hopper treadle. The hopper treadle is high and I just, I just really love it. And I love to sit on my exercise ball on it. I love having a good range of motion when I'm spinning because I have a tendency to spin for hours at a time. And since I've had the hopper, I've never had a sore back. I've never had really, really horrible posture. But I will say that sometimes I fight with it on um, when I first start a bobbin, it has a tendency to fight with me on uh, my thread on my yarn breaking because it, it pulls just a little too much if, if you're a beginner trying to do a fine yarn. So this is the hopper. You can see the, the pedals are elevated. This here this is the Lazy Kate, and it just, it pops on and off. And I do have the skein winder, but in order for the skein winder to really work, you have to have two wheels, or, well, because it, the, the winder works, but you have to use the larger bobbins if you want to spin it off of a spinning wheel, which is the way that it's meant to be used. Unless I have a really enormous bobbin of yarn, I'm just as happy to use my Knitty Knotty. And I just love mohair. I love, love, love mohair. This particular feast, uh, feast. This particular fleece is gorgeous. I bought the whole fleece and, um, I used Natalie from Namaste Farms, um, Dirty Rotten Bastard. I used that shampoo to clean these. And if you don't have the right soap when you're doing mohair, your fleece will be ruined because they are so greasy. The mohair is so greasy that it takes a really special detergent to get them really clean. And um, I had tried to wash multiple fleeces that were just as nice as this in like Dawn dish soap and other detergents. and they always were still really greasy afterwards. So with these, with mohair, you always wash in the hottest water you can get. And you don't let the water cool when you're washing. You have to keep the water hot. You can't let it cool down at all. My goodness, how far back did this go? Um, and now I can just spin it from the lock. Any dirt, any debris falls through it because it's so clean. And um, it's just a pleasure to wear. It's a pleasure to work with now. Yeah, I mean, you, when, when you're making handmade goods like this, you, you, you can't assume that you're going to make minimum wage on them. A lot of it just has to be that you love it so much that you, you just love making the product and you get enough back to make it worth your while. Because, for instance, on my double hats, I've got um, at least 20 hours into spinning the yarn, and that doesn't include the dyeing time. Mm -hmm. and, and then 20 hours for the knitting. And so if you have a $200 hat and you got 40 hours into it, you do the math, how much you actually make an hour. And then you also have to pay for your fiber. So um, 
when you have an Etsy store and stuff like that, a, a, a good portion of the reason you do it has to be because you love it. And if I was to use a wheel that wasn't Spinolution, it would be Kromsky, but they're not as fast and they're not as ergonomically correct. I, it, it, <laughs> it takes th me three times as long to spin something on a Kromsky wheel as it does to do a Spinolution wheel. And if you go over to How to Spin Yarn with Ashley Martineau, she likes to use the Firefly, which is the electric um, spinning wheel. But I love the process of spinning and treadling. I feel like if I'm going to be, I, I feel like it's the treadling that helps my body know when it's time to stop and take a break and keeps you from getting fatigued. But, um, you know, some people have a bad back and they really need to use something electric and the Firefly would be, would be that option. Next. So isn't that pretty? It'll be really nice and soft. So. There's that. I'm going to put this one up for a bit and I'm going to work on the Mach 3 for a minute. So this is the Mach 3 and it's very, very different from the, um, the hopper. I like that the pedals are somewhat far apart. They're quite far apart con compared to a traditional wheel and I can spin very, very fine on this. You'll notice the difference though between um, the second to last drive band and the last drive band um, as far as the speed that you can spin at. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm on the second right now. Yeah, I'm on the second. So if I drop this down to the smallest whirl, you'll see there's a huge difference in how fast I can spin because right now I'm pushing as hard as I can and I can't make it go any faster but you get a lot more twist in there so you can spin a finer yarn I don't like it on the last whirl I feel like it's just a little too sluggish and like I have to think about it too hard and so I like to put it on the second to last one and then it's quite fast and what I'm spinning right now is I'm spinning Amy's yarn for her sweater. It's going to be in Silver Birch. She's one of our Patreon friends. And um, she's, in the, she's in the layer or the level where she could either ask for a $200 hat every month or she could ask for a sweater for the year. And so what I'm working on is her sweater for the year. You can see it's a very heavy wheel, so it doesn't vibrate when you're really, really spinning fast. But, okay, I'm trying to stop it. 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 Okay, now it finally stopped. If I had the brake on, I could have just stopped it instantly. But I felt like in my lowest whirl, the, the, um, the band and the brake kept rubbing against each other. Um, and the reason I have this wheel is so that I can spin finer, uh, finer yarns. And so what I, what I did was I just took the brake off so that it wasn't rubbing. I have found that when I put the, um, I should grab that. I think I have it in the hope chest though. I have found that when I put the lazy Kate on that when I start to really spin fast, that the, if I have a bobbin on the Lazy Kate, it has a tendency to rattle just a little bit. But if, if my treadling isn't quite so fast, I haven't found that. It's only when I'm like really zipping along and I have a very fine yarn and so I'm just treadling like the wind. Of all the wheels, I feel like this is the most versatile with the exception that you can't travel with it, which since... I don't know, you're your ratios, your spinning ratios are affected hugely by which flyer you put on. 
The eight ounce flyer is the smallest one that you can put on this. Um, the only ones that have a four ounce flyer are the Queen Bee and the Polywog. They have a four ounce flyer, so you can get higher ratios. Like I think the Queen Bee, you can go up to one to 30, 30 to one ratio with the Queen Bee. But everything else pretty much starts at like a 16 to one. Um, this one with the eight ounce flyer, I believe you can get a 25, 25 to one ratio. I would like to try the other wheels, uh, the queen bee and the king bee. I would like to see what I think of them because they're meant specifically to travel with. They fold down really nice into a small space. And so that would be nice to be able to, to just try them out so that I could tell people what I do or don't like about them. See, I'm trying to stop, trying to stop. There we go. I just want to make sure that it's on the right hook. Um, when you're doing a really fine yarn like this, it can really take um, a lot of time to see any build up on your bobbin. This particular yarn, uh, this particular ply, I've been working on. I worked on solid for about four days, and I still have one more ply to spin, so I need to fill up one more bobbin in order to get it and turn it into a two ply by, by then plying it. So for every piece of yarn you see, however many plies it has, it's been spun for, spun once for each one of those plies and then you spin it again in order to join the two plies together. So if you have a two ply, that yarn has been spun on the spinning wheel three times before you ever knit with it. And this is what I really like about using the ball is that if I start to feel myself kind of getting stiff or kind of bored and trying to change the way that I'm spinning, it's kind of nice to just be able to move around a little bit um, and just and just change my position a little. One thing about using hand spun yarn rather than store bought yarn is that machines are for the most part going to be more um, regular in their spinning. They're they're you know they're programmed to always give you the same result every time. And with hand spinning, you might be really distracted watching a movie, you might be yelling at your kids, you might just be tired since the last time that you spun. And so when you use hand spun yarns, a lot of times the, there are gonna be inconsistencies. Your gauge might be off a little bit, which means that the, hand, the finished product might or might not be as perfect as you want it to be. Uh, which is why with my hand spun stuff, I do like to pick a pattern that's kind of forgiving. I like to, I don't really necessarily like to make terribly fitted garments. Uh, I like to do something that has a little bit of give. Um, and, and the one exception to this is socks and gloves, in my opinion. Socks and gloves, you cannot afford to have any discrepancy in that because they are so very, very fitted and you don't want a lot of bulk in the wrong spot and you don't want to slub in the wrong spot. And so it is much more time consuming to make yarn like that than it is for something like a hat or a sweater, uh, like a, a bulky sweater, just because it has to be perfect. And for those yarns, it takes a really, really long time to get them spun up. <laughs> and so for instance, if I was to make somebody a big old pair of socks, I'd charge $150 because I'm going to make sure that that yarn is regular. I'm going to purchase the yarns to be something specific. Or I mean, I'm going to purchase my wool. My wool has to be very specific. And um, I, I need to really, really be paying attention when I'm spinning and not be distracted by a movie and not be distracted by my kids when I'm spinning that yarn. And you see, it's taken me half an hour just to fill in that little crack that was all that was left on this bobbin. So that is... With the Polywog, it's a great little spinning wheel. The reason that I don't spin on it more is the length of my spinning sessions my feet are okay. together. So this is more of a traditional treadle. I like to have a double treadle just because I think it balances the muscles in my legs better. That. That's without the accelerator. Add, it's like adding gearing on a vehicle. Uh, instead of having one really, really big wheel, you have multiple small wheels. 
Okay, so that's what the accelerator looks like. And it just means that you get more twist and less pull so that you can do a much finer yarn. And I can spin on this one for about 45 minutes. It's just, I guess the best way to say it is that it's not a production wheel. It's, um, it's a hobby wheel. So those are the three wheels that I own, and I they all have good, good and bad. Well, I don't know the Mach three. What was bad about the Mach three? Oh, not necessarily bad. Just personal choice, I guess, is the best way to say. They all have good things about them, and the reason you would pick one over the other is all just personal choice. So if you are interested in getting any kind of spin illusion, or you have questions about them, you can go to my Etsy store and you can look at them and see what the prices are. Uh, they, when you bring, put all the accessories with it, it can get pretty spendy. You can get the package deals. Um, but I will not steer you towards a wheel that you don't need. And if I feel like this ventilation wheel isn't very, you know, isn't friendly for what you're looking for, I would definitely point you towards a Kromsky. Um, but as far as the price points go and, and how long they're going to last you and how pretty they are and that kind of thing, um, there are wheels out there that aren't terribly expensive that are, you know, about $300, like the Babe wheels that are made out of PVC. To my mind, I would rather have something that looks kind of nice and is pretty and isn't made out of PVC, um, because you might as well go up into a Kromsky or a Spinolution if you're going to be spending hundreds of dollars on a tool. But it's also really nice to be able to try things out. So if you can find a studio in your area that carries these wheels so you can try them, that would be my suggestion. And I hope that was helpful. And we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.